All right, welcome to the During Business Hours podcast with Christopher and Eric. It is, what, Wednesday morning now, an early one. I haven't gotten much sleep, but uh, that's kids for you. Got my tall coffee. So what are we talking about today, Eric? Uh, Today, we are going to talk about impatient people and or people who are pretending, misleading, intentional or otherwise at their skill level in something they are pretending they can do. At, at you're speaking of customer customers or employees? Because we've uh, got both. First would be customers. Second would mainly be employees. Give me an example. So for impatient people customer-wise, we would be talking about the people who, for instance, come in for a board wash, a process in which we inform people up front takes a couple hours to finish the actual physical wash and inspection and then it can take up to three to five days for the repair slash assessment if we don't have to order out for any parts just due to the um you know care and precision that has to go into these repairs so for anyone who's not aware now that we got video on this say this this is a macbook board it's your logic board if something were to spill on it and you have no problem for, say, two, three weeks. You're like, oh, no, now it's not turning on. This is actually a liquid damage MacBook. So you'll see if there's any clarity there. We'll hook up the microscope later. But So we do a lot of uh, logic board work over here. You know, rework, um, surface-mounted stuff. And people will bring it in. And then they'll expect, oh no, I, you got to fix it in 20 minutes. You got to fix it in 30 minutes. I, I need this. And more often than not, no, it's not going to be 20. It's not going to be 30 minutes. It's going to be a few days. You do have to live without it. You went six months not telling anybody about your liquid spill. Ooh, leaving it in a drawer, a lot of people will say. Or my kid barely used it and he got it in the sprinkler. I've gotten the toilet one. I've gotten the uh, multitudes of different you know, liquid damage spills or that it dropped off a car into a puddle or my friend dropped it in water and it's really when a teenager, and I love those stories, when a teenager wants a new phone, they're going to tell you that their friend broke it. More, more times than not, they dropped it in water themselves and then it didn't break the way they wanted. So the parents come in here and we tell them, oh, it's been dropped in a toilet or it looks like they got liquid into it or it looks like it was thrown. It, it gets pretty ugly for the kids, so mm-hmm. I feel for you, but stop trying to scam your parents into buying you the newest phone. Now, with the employees, are you speaking of people who are coming in, like, the uh, job application yesterday? So, people, the people who apply for the jobs, uh, I have five years tech experience. I've repaired 600 iPhone, you know, oh, that- I'm the <laughs> MacBook guy. I can do software, whatever, whatever they say they can do, we kind of... You know, okay, yeah, you can do that. Here, show us, and we'll give them a pro- house project we have. Um, we don't go do customer items just in case anything gets messed up, but we'll give them a well, very we easy. Hundreds of tester, uh, on, hundreds. hundreds upon hundreds. Um, but we had a guy for that uh, the MacBook. He said that he could take the iClouds off of, and that was the funny one. We're like, oh, okay, so you can do FMI removal. And he's like, yeah, I can do it. No hardware needed. I'm like, okay, show me. So we have a stack of those FMI locked mm-hmm. uh, Just MacBooks. The, the donated MacBooks. Well, most of them were purchased or third parties when we have the tow companies that drop stuff off. So stuff like that. Because if they lean sale a car, then they own the property that's in it, which is just fantastic. We used to get a lot of stuff from the tow yards until 2020. Now people actually pay their bills with their stimulus money. Mm-hmm. So the uh, the other thing... From there, the employees that, or the applicants, I will say, that apply with larger-than-life resumes. You know, I worked for Amazon for 16 years. Kid, you're 24. <laughs> How does that work? Be, the people who possibly can't have the work experience they're saying they have. Yeah. yeah, 16 years experience. Well, I was taught by three people who had, you know, four, six, uh, and eight. And I'm like, well, so not, you, not you a gain their no. experience? Well, doesn't that, how does it work? No, it's not how it works. You have your experience, they have theirs, you don't add it. And I hate the stores that do this. We have a combined oh. 16 years experience. 
No, you don't. They have they have nine people with less than a year experience, and then the guy who's done it for thirty five years. It's good for the advertisement in certain cases. If you're you know Craigslist advertising or mm-hmm. your billboard, it looks impressive. It looks impressive, and then you come in and ask, and the front desk person has no experience. They are there to sell the screen protectors, take the information. And then you got the the big guys that are never in the front desk, never explaining the information, because these stores have such a disconnect. And we're we're at fault too. So mm-hmm. service, um, our terms of service and our store operating policies have changed. But we used to have that major, and now, you know, we tend to not have to have the big big guys yeah, come we, out and talk unless there's a major problem or yeah. they request us by name because they've known us in the past. So. I'm enjoying my freedom in that, you know, being able to take a nap in the afternoon, especially when I don't sleep because my kids don't let me. Mm-hmm. But it'll get fine once I take a Christmas vacation and they stay home. <laughs> That's my Didn't hope. Just you take the Christmas vacation, family no, stay I, home. I, t- I told my wife, we're going to Oklahoma. Her family that we went and visited last uh, year in Washington. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 kids stay here with grandparents. We'll go to Oklahoma, Twister City. And uh, she was super happy, and I was like, no, 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 we're not taking the kids. No, Just no, us. No. We're going to get lost in a tornado like Kansas. Oh, that's when you... <laughs> she didn't believe me. You just skip out of town. <laughs> Dude, my son is just on my nerves. Everything is screaming right now, and waking up in the middle of the night screaming, and he's just not getting sleep. It's either he didn't want to eat dinner, so he's hungry in the middle of the night. He's, he was sick, so he was sweaty in the middle of the night. So it's it's so much care and attention to anything I've never given, like to that level. It's just constant. If I'm not looking at him, he is unhappy. If you are not speaking with him, he is unhappy, and it's just demanding right now because he's getting into his terrible twos. And then he was sick, and now he is just refusing to do anything you ask, which is even worse. So to me, as his father, who was whooped into shape when I was a kid. I'm like two years old is that too, is that too young is that too young for a whooping yeah like, references two parenting fingers, book you know, this is what they taught us in school you know we tap our fingers together it's a silent you know appraisal and don't clap real loud and i'm like were they really telling us like this doesn't leave a mark you know elementary school 1996 i was gonna say that's school was wild when we, when we that's <laughs> what they used to pass around yeah it used to be even worse than that man the restrictions nowadays you see what happened with uh, oh you're a k-pop fan yep tried and true did you end up looking up what happened to k-pop you told me not to look it up so we could talk about it today oh, okay so china has banned all idolizations of k-pop stars and restricted them to dress like feminine men or a feminine men or wussies as they called it so they don't want idolization of any of the k-pop they restricted their music their sales all kinds of stuff ban them jimin is banned from china so kate uh, what is it uh what's their band name that's bts, BTS? i'm yeah. sorry i don't know what the behind the scenes is all i know is jimin from that band yeah, i, I, I only know him from the crazy english guy who was like i identify as jimin uh <laughs> i don't know how that's not identity theft or anything uh, yeah exactly that's identity theft that's if he, he was any got, older yeah. and had a mustache you would have thought he was a pervert it's just plastic surgery gone wrong it's, it's not it's an addiction to plastic surgery gone mm-hmm. wrong because he was an entitled child I'm telling you, I, I spoil the hell out of my kids. They will never be that spoiled to where you can be like, Daddy, can I get a... a I'm Nicolas a, Cage yeah, now. Yeah, can I get an enhancement because I want to look like uh, Paw Patrol? Or, you know, can I get this because I want to look like uh, Beach Volleyball Barbie? No. Get outside and dig a hole. That's how I feel. Go play in dirt for three hours like I did. Exactly. I remember digging My a parents hole. Gave I found me... a shovel was the best thing I had ever made or found or enjoyed. I'd never experienced something until I dug a three by like nine hole and got my ass whooped for it. I ruined the, mm-hmm. the backyard. I dug up roots and everything. No, I was I was bored one summer. My parents were like, we don't like that tree. Remove it. And then they just set me I outside with a, a hose easy. and a shovel. I, I never took it down, but the, they killed four months <laughs> i was no. busy me and my brother he came in like two hours after i was covered in dirt like the sand lot and man we went to town hopefully hopefully finding 
uh, what was it? Millennial capsules. Because it was just past 2000. Everyone was burying capsules. Oh, well, yeah. We yeah, just yeah. moved into this house and we were like, somebody buried treasure. I guarantee They it. had to. Yeah. They, they had a whole treasure, like X marks the spot. Somebody was messing with us. Now that I look back, somebody was definitely messing with us because it had an X about this big that was in red all over the yard. And I think it was either the gas company or something, but we're kids. We'd seen Hook. X marks the spot, you know, Peter Pan. Can you imagine if it was the gas company? Shovel, psh, gas, a gas line. Um, we only got probably like three, nine, nine, I would say three feet across, six feet uh, long, and maybe six inches down because it was dry. Mm -hmm. So when we started flooding the yard and my parents got a call, hey, did you know you left the hose on again? It's coming downhill. Yeah, my dad came flying down that hill because we had a slope about this big. And so every summer he'd make this giant cellophane slip and slide to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It was easily, as an adult, 150 feet long because my grandfather owned a tow yard. So mm -hmm. he had cellophane to put around everything. He had those huge industrial wrap, whatever. He had to things. bring a forklift out to unroll it. And so we just dawn soaped and it was like the best thing the, ever. The slipperiest thing in the universe. There's, there's nowhere else that I've ever seen that has that type of slip and slide. There's, <laughs> I don't know, but back to my point about the uh, the K-pop. Everyone is the stands, I guess. They're yeah, upset. That's what they're calling them now. Yeah, the K-pop stands, the social media stands. They are upset at the racism and the the un injustice for BTS. And I don't think it's injustice. I think that people are idolizing any idolization of one thing too much is insanity. Why why spend because you know goods and time time is a good or service to something right mm -hmm. so you have to give that in exchange you ever seen in time the movie with justin timberlake yeah, yeah yeah that's how real world content consumption is so when you consume something you're giving someone your time mm -hmm. you now have less of your life that time is sold to advertisers so on and so forth yeah. so the more people that consume their stuff and then pretend to be them or like battle for them and they don't have to do anything they're rich on time it's free advertisement at that point you got two people on twitter arguing for four days about jimin versus someone else i wish i knew another name to reference but the those people go crazy online i have a lot All of k-pop stuff give me bop give me bop yeah it's a food i was gonna say that's a food that's <laughs> not even a person <laughs> give me bop bali bali <laughs> um i spent what nine and a half months in Korea, mm -hmm. ten months, something like that, two thousand eight to two thousand nine. So, oh no, over a year. Yeah, God, I keep thinking it was like because I left in August or September that it would have been there. You know, but I was there from two thousand eight to two thousand nine, so easily over a year. And I spoke so like well to all the Odishis and Odishes, and uh, it was a barter system for everything you needed. If you needed a bootleg movie, they wanted the dollar, or you could uh, give them uh, soju or food or rice, you know. Mm -hmm. It was just an argument in, in how much you were paying. So if they wanted 2,000 won, you could be like 200 won, you know, and then you agree on 200 won, but they were thinking 200 US. So I, I got into a fight once in Korea with a uh, taxi driver I told him I would pay him 100 to get me from Camp Casey which is Dong to the uh, Seoul airport and so that's like maybe $75 US on a regular taxi mm -hmm. so I was like I will give you 100,000 won that is maybe 50 bucks 60 bucks at the time or yeah so figured oh I'm getting a discount and he agrees and then when we get there he gets the cops involved because I'm like no I hand him the 100,000 won he's like no no 100 US and so he tries to blackball me I'm like nah bud so I leave the 100,000 in his car and walk away he called yeah. the cops they pull me out of the terminal and I'm like no you scam this guy I'm like no 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 this is one of those bait and switches where I told him how much beforehand I'm heading for a uh, flight back to the US I told him clearly 100,000 won won Showed him the money before, after he had demanded U.S. dollar. Guy ends up getting arrested or cited. Mm -hmm. But uh, they threw him in cuffs like he was scamming multiple people. 
this is 2009, 2010. And that was the same flight that I went to LAX first and met the lead singer of Cupid's Chokehold. You know that song? Um, he was a, him and Fall Out Boy were a big pe- you know, person, band, collaboration back then. Uh, I don't even remember his name. We got his autograph and then I met Eddie Murphy. Yeah, LAX back then was just popping with people, especially international flights. With the... Uh, I've done a lot. That's 15 years, uh, 11 years ago. A lot of shit's changed in 11 years. That's because it's a long time. What were you doing in 2010? I didn't even know what I was doing in 2010. I, I wasn't even working at uh, Fry's at that point because it was 2011. I think I was refereeing soccer and just playing Xbox in my parents' house, doing school stuff. You could have been the sideman. Could have been the sideman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the sideman. Anyone playing Xbox in like 2008 to 2010? Mm-hmm. All those kids that joined YouTube made a lot of money. Oh, yeah, the side one. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I couldn't believe some of these before and after videos that I saw on YouTube. Like, here's what they were doing not mm-hmm. even 10 years ago. Here, some people were rags to riches. Some were riches to rags. And the, the apparent wealth that you can amass and then change within 10 years is crazy. Mm-hmm. As you see, like, Paris Hilton used to be the top of the world, 2010, 2011. That was the social media icon. Now it's Kim Kardashian, the mm-hmm. assistant. I'm like, shit, I need to get an assistant. <laughs> All, All sudden, this is telling me is I should put a sex tape out 10 years ago and I'd be rich right now. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be, I'd be poor five years later, but I'd have my moment. It is... The aspect of how social media works is really weird, especially people who aren't creating content. They're more imagizing them themselves, like Im- putting themselves out as an image to the world mm-hmm. so that they can be perceived as beautiful, rich, wealthy, enlightened. When half those people don't got their shit together or the filters mm-hmm. that people follow. And I'm like, man, you cannot say that someone's beauty filter along with five pounds of makeup is going to be the actual thing you walk into especially after 9 p.m. that woman's taken off that makeup and is not going to look the same mm-hmm. see some of these tiktoks even my wife showed me one of like how it looks like a nice little farm girl just instant glam over mm-hmm. i'm like who is that that looks like red red uh carpet style makeup looks like an actress yeah Okay. But they've also have you seen the the catfish challenge? It's the girl with all her makeup on, looking good, uh, push up bra, dress, you know, whatever, every, everything, the nine, and then they bit by bit take it all off, and then you're like, that's just a regular That's person. my girlfriend. Yeah, I can't, I can't say her name for legal reasons, but that was even my roommate when I first started dating her in 2014, maybe earlier. I don't know. Um, the first thing he said to me when he met her was, "That's not the same girl you brought home." <laughs> yeah, it was a. It was a long night, and I'm like, what do you mean? You know, rose-colored glasses. It stayed with her, what, four or five years? Yeah. Worst decision. Worst decision. <laughs> Talk about eating people mentally. God. That woman called, uh, what was it? She called EMS on me after she left me. I was, I was, yay, like, let's get your stuff out. Super happy about it. Like, upset at the way she did it, because it was, like, trying to ghost, but she got mm-hmm. caught. And, uh... Just bad planner all around. That was the one where uh, the next day you got arrested in public no, at the parade? No, no or they, they re- detained me to serve me with a DVRO because <laughs> she wanted out of the lease. There's no violence. Didn't get awarded the DVRO. Even the judge laughed it off because she kept trying to hit me with one to just get a restraining order to break the lease. Mm-hmm. She owed me for five months on the lease. Pay your lease off. Be responsible. You make decent money. Pay the lease off. Otherwise, I'm still renting there. And uh, so I wasn't moving at the time. And next thing you know, all of a sudden, the uh, sack sheriff says, hey, I need to talk to you. Are you Christopher? Absolutely. Hey, you're being served in front of the parade and all the people we're handing out flyers to, business. I'm dressed up in my business clothes. Oh, man, it was upsetting. And then not even 15 minutes after that, the EMS comes by. Uh, emergency services says mm-hmm. we've got a suicidal uh, warning. 
someone was very convincing that you might be harming yourself. I'm like, I've never been happier. And what you're do you mean? standing outside of a potluck, handing out flyers to a parade going by. Yeah, uh, I'm fr- like, I've, friends I've, and family all around friends you. Friends and family, everyone celebrating this Fourth of July, this Independence Day that is my Independence Day. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that I'm going to commit suicide. Yeah. Who no. are you? Take the advice of the person. This is not something you're going to overlook. I've been in this industry, in this uh, place for five years at the time. You can ask any one of the other businesses if I seem depressed. Oh, you know what? Go ask Jimmy. Jimmy and me at the time were real talkative. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ask Jimmy. He knows what's going on with my ex. And so they didn't want to ask anybody. Like, we need to take your blood pressure and you know, see if you're on any medications. Oh, man, that was that was an eye-opener to the deviacy, you know, deviantness, I guess. I don't know if either of those are a word, but I'm going to use them from now on because they sound good. Deviousness? Otherwise, it'd be just the general de- deception that she was deception. capable of. Yeah, it was. There's so much more, but that's going to be a, another day's podcast. That's going to be the the first hour long special. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is doing an hour long podcast is near impossible because the amount of time you have to put in to do an hour long podcast, especially, you know, we're going to take some clips out, funny moments, you know, funny conversations. Uh, we'll put them up on Twitter and put this on YouTube. And once we get our graphics done, we got a team making all of that. Mm-hmm. But uh, putting an hour out there, nobody is going to listen to you for an hour. Mm-hmm. If they do, what are you sitting down listening to me for for an hour? 15, <laughs> there, 20 minutes. There's far better things you could yeah, be doing. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Stop, drink some water, do some push ups, look at something entertaining else that is not going to have you just frozen in your seat this is a warning it is not healthy so at that note i think we're done for today and then you'll see us uh, like comment subscribe do all the post notifications we're going to do this like i said a couple times a week at least so it's uh we got our monday episode this is going to be the second episode out on the rss feed uh, and in turn to iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Playlist. Yeah, Everywhere Castbox. We can get it to. I always forget about Castbox. It's the number two Android podcasting app. <laughs> never heard of it before. <laughs> the Spreaker, I never heard about. And then, uh, you know, iTunes, you know about. So I use iTunes and Spotify, Alexa's, Amazon Music. Um, I'm still waiting on my personal info, by the way. So just in case anyone's like, oh my God, where's your info? Uh, they're supposed to send me either a file digitally or a hard drive because apparently it's 250 gigs. So I don't know if the other person we had seen on TikTok was 250 the, gigs. Your, your Amazon info, yeah. 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 But it is got to be over 250 gigs. So they said that I can go to one of their facilities and download it. Or they can send it to me, but if I don't send the drive back, there'd be a charge. I was going to say, they so. have to like... This drive is four hundred dollars. You have one week to return it. It'd be like seventy bucks but probably, I mean, but because I got a they, four terabyte drive for seventy bucks, they gotta make their money somewhere on that. It's gonna be they're gonna they're it's gonna be an eighty dollar drive money. for like one hundred and fifty bucks or something. Why would they record any of this if they're not making the money? That's the point. Hmm. They're making money, bang, buku bucks somewhere. I'm gonna find out where, and then I'm gonna sell my own information. Watch out. Any any purchasers who would like to get our information, please contact us at our email. You don't know what I got. <laughs> There's a lot coming. 